Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI, and this is a 14-year-old female who injured her knee on a trampoline, came in, had normal x-rays, and uh, then went on home. And a few months later, about three months later, she continued to hurt. The pain increased in severity, and so they did another x-ray and saw that she had developed this expansile cystic bone lesion in the interval. has pretty sharply defined margins here, and you can see it expands off here laterally. Looks like maybe some subtle little bony septae along the lateral aspect. On MRI here, we see that the margins are sharply defined. There's this pretty significant component that goes off laterally and also posteriorly. It looks like it's contained within the cortex, but it does extend through the cortex, but there's a little thin rim of cortex around the periphery. And also there's these little areas of hyperintense T1 signal scattered throughout. This is an axial non-fat set T1 sequence here. And this one, you can see these scattered areas of um, hyperintense T1 signal. Some of them just faint, some of them are very bright. And on this view here, you can see a little, looks like fluid, fluid level. On this fat suppressed uh, T1 sequence, you can see everything a little bit better. These faint areas of bright signal within it, uh, hyperintense T1 signal, so look like areas of hemorrhage within little cystic cavities. With contrast, it enhances uh, significantly here. Let me try to find a good view of that. There we go. So uh, prominent enhancement and areas of fluid signal centrally, areas of looks like hemorrhage. This is an axial stir sequence. And on this, you can really see those fluid fluid levels, especially right here. So multiple scattered cystic cavities with fluid fluid levels and areas of hemorrhage. So this looks like a classic aneurysmal bone cyst. This is a sagittal stir sequence. You can see those fluid fluid levels really well on this one. Here's a fluid fluid level here, and in some of these cystic components in the back. Oh, there's one here, another one here. So again, a nice example of an aneurysmal bone cyst. Now these are usually in the pediatric, pediatric population. People are uh, typically under 20 years old. This patient was 14, so right in the appropriate age group. Sometimes they complain of prior trauma. They think maybe they can have a, a fracture, a stretch fracture, or a microfracture. They can uh, incite this. Sometimes we see them in people who don't have any history of prior trauma. They're usually within this location, usually in the metaphysis of a long bone, in more than half of the uh, patients. But they can also be in the spine, and when they're in the spine, they usually come off the posterior elements. can be really expansile. And they say that in some of these lesions, up to even a third, there may be an underlying bone lesion that serves as etiology and they grow out of it. And so luckily these are benign lesions and they can do curatage and bone packing and they typically do well. And just remember if you see a bone lesion that you know, looks kind of scary at first on x-ray, to look at the MRI and if you see these fluid, fluid levels and also areas of hemorrhage within, this is really um, classic. And they can uh, put a needle in there and if they get blood products out, supposedly that it can be diagnostic. And that's it, an aneurysmal bone cyst in a 14 or 15 year old here. And thank you very much.